Well, toast my soggy marshmallows. Next week, Samsung is holding what feels like its 15th unpacked event of 2024, considerably adding to the workload of myself and my fellow tech review twats by launching a bugger load of new gadgets, including multiple bendy blowers, earbuds, and at least a couple of fresh new smartphones. I've already wibbled on about the Galaxy Z Flip 6 and Fold 6 in previous episodes, which perhaps you were fortunate enough not to watch. So in this week's regrettable slice of internet toss cake, let's wrap our lips around a tasty bit of Samsung smartwatch action. Jingle me daddy-o. Techspert Weekly. Now thanks to the many, many leaks that have dribbled all over the internet, it's a sure thing that we'll see the fresh Galaxy Watch 7 unveiled at the next Unpacked event sporting the usual rounded design, just like last year's Watch 6. But on top of this, Samsung is apparently preparing to unveil a fresh new Galaxy Watch Ultra for any fans out there with particularly bulging pockets, which will by all accounts replace the previous Galaxy Watch Pro range. Now like the Watch 7, the Ultra will also sport a circular screen, according to these leaked pics, although at a quick glance it looks more like an Apple Watch thanks to its squarish frame. And this big old body should hopefully mean lots of room for a massive battery and lots of other clever component stuff. That's where you really come to Techspert, isn't it, for that insightful analysis? Samsung will offer the Galaxy Watch 7 in a couple of sizes as usual, 44mm for the beefy wristed, as well as a smaller 40mm effort. Meanwhile, the Ultra will apparently come in a single size of 47mm. Great news if you've got arms like f***ing tree trunks. Can't wait to review it and basically look like a small child who's nicked off with his granddad's jewellery. The Watch 7's armour aluminium chassis is likely to be upgraded to titanium for the Ultra, while all of Sammy's new wearables should sport a scratch-resistant sapphire screen with full water resistance. In the Ultra's case, you can expect it to survive to even greater depths. According to the web whisperings, it'll survive up to 10 atmospheres of pressure. So it's basically tougher than a Weatherspoon's pork chop coated in Kevlar. For our American chums, you can just swap out Weatherspoons from Applebee's. Now, the Galaxy Watch Ultra appears to sport two side buttons as well as a rotating digital crown. And presumably that extra button will be programmable so you can assign it to some sort of fitness type shenanigans if you're into all that flapping about bollocks. And in the leaks we've seen so far, both watches will come with a selection of straps as usual, including this moody green effort for the Watch 7 and this powerfully bright tango orange morpho for the Ultra. And internet chat reckons that both watches will pack an AMOLED display, no real shock or surprise there. Although apparently they'll be crazy bright, the Watch 7 screen will hit 2000 nits, while the Ultra allegedly maxes out at 3000 nits. Oof, bump it right up and it'll probably melt you like that poor bugger out of Robocop. Battery size will apparently stay the same for the Watch 7 compared with the previous generation, so 300mAh and 425mAh for the two different sizes. But still, a smaller 3 nanometer chipset should mean a small boost to the power efficiency. So hey, maybe the Watch 7 won't die faster than my passion for footy every time I watch England play. And seriously, I've sat through modem briefings that have been more entertaining. As for the Ultra, well, the extra space afforded by that squarish design should hopefully mean Samsung has crammed in a bloody massive battery. The leaks do point to a 590mAh cell, which is the same as the old Watch 5 Pro. And that Watch 5 Pro could just about squeak three days of use from a full charge, as long as you, you know, don't really bother to use many of the features or anything. So still not up there with the best of them, but it should hopefully see you through a full weekend if you bugger off on some sort of activity type thing. And you can certainly expect the Ultra to come pack in lots of active type features for any of you healthy folk. And as I say, both the Watch 7 and the Watch Ultra should launch at Samsung Unpacked next Wednesday, the 10th of July. You can expect the Watch 7 to come in at around sort of 400 quid or 400 US dollars. Whereas apparently, according to, again, internet gossip, the Ultra will drain your wallet by approximately 700 GBPs or US dollars. It's better start nicking money out of Grand's purse pretty pronto. Anyway, now it's time for the part of the show that makes switching over to the England match actually seem like a pretty bloody good idea. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. We are joined in this week's viewer comments by Kuro the Cat, who's given himself a jolly good licking out. So he'll be having the most fun out of any of us. So let's start this week with Void Void, who says, Imagine the smell. 
I assume you're referring to the absolute state I was in in last week's episode where I literally just touched down at the airport about three hours before turning the frigging camera on. I didn't have to imagine the smell, buddy. I was living it. The pieman says, Hi Mr. Spurt, I'm sat in Liverpool Airport waiting for my flight to Turkey and I've downloaded this week's episode to watch on the flight. Jesus Christ, no in-flight entertainment then. Just hope they keep you well stocked up with miniatures. Over the last few days, I've been preparing for my holiday by going into various local branches of Greg's dressed in speedos and flip-flops, pointing at the steak slices, shouting two at the person behind the counter and then being with a 50 quid note. Do you prepare for your holidays before you go or do you just wing it? Well, back in the days before smartphones and such forth, I used to prepare tons for holidays. I used to go away with a massive binder full of printouts from Google Maps so I could find the local dive bars, no worries. Whereas these days I just Google shit like everyone else, so yeah, zero prep. I do try to learn a little bit of language for whichever country I'm going to, just a please and a thank you and a what is your cheapest lager, just the essentials. Yeah, my folks always go to, to Turkey every year and they say the prices over there are getting insane now, especially when it comes to the alcohol, to the point where they actually travel with empty suitcases and just load up with duty-free booze. Plunder1956 says, One thing I will never envy Spurt is long-distance flights. I had my fill of them 30 years ago. Yeah, I'm not really a fan myself, that's for sure. Though thankfully I am a short arse, so at least I fit into most aircraft seats without too much discomfort. The one good thing about long distance flights is it's basically my one chance these days to actually watch a full length movie from start to finish. So on that last trip to the States, enjoyed a good bit of the Meg 2, can beat a bit of Statham action. And let me tell you, that movie was absolutely made to be enjoyed on a 7 inch 720p screen that some small child has apparently attacked with a pen knife. Andrew Egan says, what a hard worker you are. I suspect as usual, might be slight sarcasm creeping into that one. See, this is the problem with the YouTube comment section. You really need a little tick box that you just check whenever you're being sarcastic so I know whether to be flattered or offended. Hi, Youngster Cruise says, This year made me realise that it's better to have an old flagship than a new mid-ranger. Yeah, absolutely. You know, now that software support is generally getting longer and longer, it is actually quite a viable option to go for a flagship that's a year or two older compared with a fresh new mid-ranger. And Pixel Gaming says, Not too long ago, 4.3 inches was humongous, and now 6.3 inches is dinky. You know, you consider that phones these days are basically the size of tablets from back in the day. Madness! And next up, in your studio, a wise individual once said, when I die, delete my search history. You've absolutely got to make sure you get on really well with your immediate family so they don't just post that straight up on the internet the second you get smashed by a bus. Joe M says, any chance of you actually reviewing the Oppo Find X7? No, they don't send me the Find X stuff anymore because it just doesn't come out in the UK, basically, which does make me really, really sad because the Find X phones used to be some of my favourite flagships. But also, on the flip side, holy sh**, there are so many phones that do actually launch in the UK that I'm kind of glad I don't get them anymore because I don't need extra stuff. Bit more nostalgia from JT74 who says, I remember the N-Gage. I worked in a game shop and we got sent a demo unit that was apparently such hot property it had to be locked in a safe overnight. In the months of demoing it on the shop floor, we sold precisely none. I mean, I'm not really massively surprised. It's quite a hard sell. It's a phone that doesn't look anything like a phone and a games console that had about, what, seven legit titles for it? Because I'm still such a massive nerd that it didn't stop me from wanting one but luckily i'd spent all my money on pints of grolsch and the bismarck says i've still got the new 3ds as my travel gaming machine the variety of time wasters on offer is amazing although i do wish sony would get the rack together and release a psp go or xperia play 2. Well, the 3ds was an absolute banger i mean i absolutely loved that thing i mean just have an ocarina of time in a portable form made you know that purchase worthwhile but then on top of that you've also got like metroid Mario Kart, Professor Layton, Phoenix Wright. I swear it's the most fun you can have on a train besides telling some c**t in a suit to shut the f up when he's loudly boasting about his bonus on his mobile phone. And I would be very happy if Sony did have to spaff out another PSP as well, especially if it was backwards compatible with the old PSP games because I've got about 20 of the buggers sat in my attic. Unfortunately, my PSP, the battery basically exploded out of the back because I hadn't turned it on for a couple of years. 
I think I even had a movie on one of the little disky things. Remember, you could buy the latest summer blockbusters for like 25 quid to watch on your PSP screen. Again, the ideal way of watching The Matrix. Ramp978 says, Next time, can you talk about She Ra instead of He Man? The one fun fact I remember about She Ra is that she's got a horse called Swift Wind, which is precisely what I suffer from when I have a particularly potent Vindaloo. So on last week's episode, as well as chatting about the state of my personal hygiene, we were also talking about the good old OnePlus Nord 4, which is still set to launch in a couple of weeks. And plenty of correspondence on that as well. So for example, Max Z says, currently rocking an 8T as I can't stand displays with the edge. And OnePlus seems to be obsessed with these, but the Nord 4 looks really promising. Yeah, a lot of mid-range phones seem to go with that curvy edge bollocks which is i guess it's supposed to give it a more premium vibe because of course like every flagship from a few years ago went with the curvy edges as well but frankly it just balks up the responsiveness and it's a pain in the bloody ass jesse boy says oneplus nord should do a collab with nord vpn and release phones with its own vpn similar to the pixel it does kind of seem like an obvious partnership right like the england football team with diarrhea medicine and just to balance it out for anyone who thinks I'm not being patriotic enough. Come on England, it's coming home, it's coming home, etc. Jack Wilson says, I got the Nord 3 and it's an excellent all-round phone. If I were to upgrade it, I'd probably go for the OnePlus 12R. The only problem this one has is that the data drains more battery than Qualcomm phones. And also loving the Nord 3 is Eztuz, who says, it does pretty much everything I need it to, although wireless charging would have been nice. Now, I still haven't reviewed the sodden thing, unfortunately, through powers out of my control, uh, but really looking forward to the Nord 4, so stay tuned for a bit of unboxy fun of the action from that soon. Ita Hassan says, dude, put some on you in Genshin. Lisa and Raisin isn't cutting it. But believe me, I've tried desperately to win some new characters in that weird roulette paid for thing you have to do. Every single time, we just end up getting the same sodden 12-inch mega sword. The obvious compensation sword, as it should be called. I just really do not understand that game at all. And yes, I know, I play hours of it every week, so I should probably read some sort of online tips and tricks guide or something so I know vaguely what I'm supposed to be doing. I just really can't be f***ed. Gob says, At this precise moment in my life, I would gladly accept the offer of a nosh from a ghost. For that to really work, I'm guessing it would have to be some sort of poltergeist, right? Because otherwise it's spectral bits would just pass straight through your meat truncheon. I'm surprised they didn't do an episode of X-Files about it, frankly. Uh, really out of time, so better make these the last couple. So Adamp Tech says, Uncle Spurt, I'd love a shout out. Watching Techspert Weekly all this time has converted me from an Apple user to Android. Top lad. And Paul Swartout says, Space Raiders versus Monster Munch versus Transform A Snacks tomorrow ketchup flavour. Number three gets my vote. You know what? I completely bloody forgot that those Transformer snacks even existed. Okay, I'm going to have to completely rethink my rankings of cheapy crisps from back in the day now. Monster Munch and Discos definitely absolutely have to be up there, but I think Transformer might just knock out the likes of Space Raiders and stuff. Unless, of course, there's any other pocket money friendly snacks from back in the day that I've completely neglected to include, so definitely clue me in in the comments below. Oh, and Ian Levinston says, Next week is the start of Mad Month here in Ulster. Lots of bonfires, parades and the odd tonic wine. Now, I've seen uh, clips of that on, uh, I think, what was it? It was like a Simon Reeve TV show or something. Looks absolutely f***ing mental. Enjoy your tonic wines and stay safe as well because it looks like it can get a wee bit rowdy at times. And yes, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Please do smash your comments down below and we'll merrily wend our way through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week... Next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? Well, next week is shaping up to be what us tech video toss pots like to call a bit of a c*** because it's pretty full on. Got Samsung Impact, of course, on Wednesday, July the 10th. So they'll be launching phones, watches, earbuds, a few, a few wee bits. And if you're too skinned for all that shiny sh well, no worries, because nothing is going to be launching its fresh round of CMF gear on Monday the 8th. And that includes the very first CMF phone as well. So interesting times. Definitely come back on Monday. You might see a couple of videos on some of that shenanigans. And I think by the end of the week, I'll be heavily smashing some of those tonic wines. Huge thanks for watching this shower of to the bitter end. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. Cheers, everyone. Love you.